Okay, uh, just a quick video here. I've been using Solve Space, and this was a complicated coaster sort of sized object that I was just going to cut using some arcs and working on my uh, understanding of how the tangent uh, edge uh, rounding works and just getting used to some com constraints on nonlinear uh, shapes. Now, this is still going to export G code that's linear, so it's still compatible with my machine, but again, this is uh, the Solve Space. It's a free um, CAD program. It doesn't just do 2D, it'll actually do full 3D CAD and it'll um, export STL files and dot object files and that. So if you were going to put it in your slicer and, and you know 3D print, but right now I'm just using it for the bulk of my 2D stuff. Anyhow, I'm just going to export the G code here in a second. And uh, where I don't have a tripod, um, I'm going to have to pause the video. Okay, so I've loaded up the G-code in uh, the uh, Chrome G-code sender. It's kind of a universal sender, but really it works for the GBRL type boards, but it's fully uh, compatible with my custom firmware, even though mine can only take linear moves. The G-code was actually busted down into a series of linear moves. So that's the shape, and the dotted lines are, of course, the, uh, the rapid path. And uh, my... Uh, camera here is having a hard time focusing on the screen, but that's fine. Anyhow, so what I'm going to try and do is, uh, hopefully I've got the feed rate correct to cut some of this sort of fun foam that comes from the dollar store. It's just uh, two millimeter thick uh, uh, foam. It's very flexible, but it should make some interesting coasters. And something I'm not sure that I've shown on these videos yet is um, part of my custom firmware, if this will focus here with the daylight out there, it's a little bit hard. Um, I have a little screen that shows me my position and my status, and I might uh, take a second and show that while this is going. Um, one of the things that my custom firmware allows for is the couple different lasers that I have. One of them actually has a beam warm-up time, and uh, I've had to make a custom code that allows me to uh, change whether the beam comes on from negative z-axis and whether it has a warm-up time. And this particular laser module is very fast. I'm just going to try taking the autofocus off. There we go. Um, this particular laser is very fast, so uh, um, it doesn't need a warm up time of anything. So, what I'm going to do now, oops, it's not used to where the lens on this is. So, we're going to send this file over to the machine. So, let's power up the uh, stepper power supply. And uh, I'm just going to send that to the machine. As you can see it's streaming away the G-code. And over here it started hopefully cutting right through. I'm not sure if it is. But uh, there's going to be a few hundred commands. I think we were at about like 500 commands or 400 commands for this. But if you can see here the little status window here is showing that the uh, beam is on and it updates every job. Every time there's a new line of g-code comes to the uh, machine it'll update that little screen. If I updated it any quicker than that it would actually interfere with the speed of the, uh, the uh, cutting. But, uh, from the looks of it and what I can see on the screen um, it appears to be going right through the phone. So anyhow I'm just gonna pause this now and I'll show more uh, as it gets further along going to follow up here. Um, as you can see, it's still streaming G-code. And uh, it's working on the uh, little inside uh, inclusions there. So I don't think it'll be very long before this particular uh, job is finished here. hoping that that's going right through the foam. Looks like it's melted a fair bit and it actually looks like it might be a tiny bit out of focus. Um, if you look very closely you'll see the top of the cut is wide. That's usually with foam an indication that your beam is a tiny bit out of focus. Um, I was playing with the focus a bit the other night because I was cutting on some more uh, or engraving some larger wooden objects. But, uh, let's see if we can get right in close here. Uh, yeah, it looks kind of uh, rounded on the edge. Now that can just be the this foam. 
is not only do you have to calibrate for the type of foam, your feed rate for the is essentially the burn strength when you're using this. The feed rate um, sort of controls how long the laser lingers in one spot under this way. But you also have to realize that the different materials are going to have different feed rates, but so is their color because um, the color will change how much of the laser energy is absorbed by the material. And foam is also self-insulating, so there's a couple of complexities in cutting foam. Um, black Depron or black meat tray foam cuts almost instantly. It almost has no resistance, but it is a great insulator. Almost all foams are great insulators, so sometimes you'll actually see there's a rounding on the bottom side, which is where the reflected heat from the uh, cutting table uh, melted the foam from underneath. And uh, you can get that happening um, pretty easy, and that just tells you that your feed rate is a bit too slow. So in this case here, I can see there's some pretty good glowing and some smoke, which is making me think uh, it's actually hitting the cardboard below. And if you can see the shrinkage on that, I think the feed rate might actually be a tiny bit too slow for this. I think it's some residual heat and melting that's causing the, uh, the cut path to be wide. But I'm hoping this has gone right through. So it uh, looks like it's about to wrap up here in a second. There's only about uh, 10 G-code commands left in queue, so... I think that's it, and this is the finish of this. So we'll look here. Yeah, that's done. There we go. Yeah, it looks like it's gone right through. Um, I don't have a way to, uh, to hold this, but let's see here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's just pull these off. Sorry for the shake there, everybody. I don't really have the uh, tripod, so if we can lift this up. <laughs> it doesn't weigh anything, this foam. Well, the main sheet has cut cleanly. If this will fall. see here. Yeah, we got a clean cut. And then we have the, uh, the coaster piece here. The little parts. They're just being held in, I think, by a little bit of, um, yeah, just one or two spots. Just rub them out. <laughs> Stubborn on that one. Come back to it in a second. In this case, I probably had the beam rate for this color foam, this orange foam. Um, I probably had the feed rate um, probably just about right because the foam was just hanging in to get, just holding itself together. And, uh, <laughs> you can see the, uh, the burn through pattern on some items. The cardboard kind of will give you a telltale of your feed rate. And as I've mentioned in other video, it's a heck of a lot nicer to smell uh, the burning wood sort of smell of cardboard than that of paint or anything else if there was metal underneath. Um, and this foam here doesn't really have any scent at all when it's cutting. It's it's uh, weird. There's like not any chemical scent. Anyhow, um, that's uh, how I do that there. That's the um, quick cut of a coaster, funny little coaster item. And, uh, of course, there's some other, any kind of things you can cut with construction paper or any of that stuff. And, of course, you can make uh, compound objects, cutting the different parts and then putting them back together. Like, I could cut um, different colored foam to go in those little inserts if I wanted to. It just depends on what you're feeling like messing around with. Um, I've made some danger signs for this thing and then a few other things out of construction paper just for fun. But, uh... Um, that's uh, that file, and again, uh, thanks for watching.